What's up, y'all? I am Marcus, also known as EMB, and welcome back to From the Dark. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about today, specifically starting with... If you watched the end last time, you actually saw me suck some humanity out of Zeegland. Uh, I'm using this item called a Dark Hand. This dropped for me from a Dark Wraith in New Londo, basically while I was farming for uh, upgrade materials. Uh, the Dark Wraiths incited by Kath use the power of the Dark Soul to absorb humanity, an art shared by this weapon, which also acts as a special shield. The ancients, particularly, could sap the humanity of even a replete saint in the blink of an eye. Tons of lore in this. We will talk more about the wraiths when we get their equipment, but a couple of key points that I want to hit here. They absorb humanity by the power of the Dark Soul. This is something that we've talked about thematically throughout the entire playthrough, especially a lot in the DLC, but also when discussing the mechanic where sometimes you get the Black Soul absorption and you pull humanity from defeated foes. Humanity seeks humanity. The power of the Dark Soul seeks humanity. Uh, another thing, the Ancients, is kind of a hint that there may be even older wraiths within the timeline. Um, when the original game came out before the DLC, before all of the Artur Artorius of the Abyss content. A lot of us felt like the Knights of New Londo were specifically the Dark Wraiths, thanks to some text that we'll see later on, and we'll discuss it then too. Uh, but it's possible that the Wraiths have been around. Like, there's been many more Wraiths. Like, anytime uh, Kath pops up and he's like, hey, life drain for everybody, then you end up with this fucking Dark Wraith situation. Um, another thing... Uh, Saints have a lot of humanity. Are they regarded as saintly because they have a lot of humanity? Uh, females definitely tend to have more humanity. We just see that in the game. Like, if you try to suck humanity out of females with a dark hand, you tend to get more. Plus, female corpses tend to have twin humanities on them. So, uh, And we see items in the Church of Thurland reserved for female clerics. Uh, I don't know. Just kind of some, some interesting points. Uh, speaking about a specific female, speaking about Zeegland here as we head back into Isolith, uh, she's not undead based on cut dialogue, right? We talked about that before, that there was dialogue in the game that was cut where uh, Ziegmeier says, and she's not even undead, which makes her an extreme badass. Even though that dialogue was cut, it's still supported in-game by her entire plan to return to Katarina. Like, as soon as she finishes off her dad, she's like, well, I'm going back to Katarina. Um, an undead's probably not going to do that. Like, you're going to end up locked up in the Northern Asylum, right? Uh, so, she seems to be human. Now, what this what this is is going to mess with people a little bit is because we, we pulled humanity out of her. Like, we pulled a fragment of the Dark Soul out of her. Uh, but basically, the way I look at it is this. Humans all have fragments of the Dark Soul, alright? Just having a bit of the Dark Soul, just having humanity, that, that's what makes you human. It doesn't make you undead. The dark sign, specifically, is what brands the undead. The dark sign is what makes you undead. So, in Zieglin's case, she has humanity, but she doesn't have the dark sign. So, she's human. She's not undead. Uh, by the way, uh, a lot of reviewers <laughs> were like, Hey, dude, <laughs> the first ziggurat, go back. <laughs> Get the solo great hero. So, we'll pick this up today. Uh, but... Uh, this is actually a really good hint as to where the bonfire is. This really, like, the fact that you can go inside this one but can't go inside the other one, that's actually the best hint as to the bonfire's location, right? It's, it's actually really, really, really good. Um, but yeah, the dark sign, I don't... Uh, let's talk about this little soul first, sorry. It's post-con today. <laughs> Great soul of a hero of legend who has long ago gone hollow. Um, this actually ties into what I want to say about the dark sign, actually. The thing about this, souls are the source of all life, and whether undead or hollow, you continue to seek them. Continue to seek them. So it kind of makes it seem like normal humans also seek souls. And incidentally, hollows appear to be beings that have lost their souls. Like, we find this soul separate from the body. That's why the body is hollow. I think that's kind of my interpretation. So going back to what I was about to say about the dark sign is like we have. I hope there's going to be more information about this in Dark Souls three, uh, but a lot of people through the through the years have said, well, maybe it's just a sign of your humanity is fading, so your skin's starting to burn away and you're starting to hollow. I don't really think that's it though. 
I think it's more of, I think it's like a seal, basically, that keeps your soul in place. Like, when you die, you, your soul is reborn in your body again, and your body begins to deteriorate, but your soul is still there. It's only if you finally, your soul leaves the body, that's when, that's when you hollow, right? So I, I kind of, that's just me, like I, my interpretation of the dark sign, and we, I really, really, really hope they go more into it in Dark Souls 3 because it's kind of one of the most important points of the lore right now. And like, where did the dark sign come from? Is it just a natural state of things? Or is it somebody trying to keep humans from hollowing? Like, is this a rite of the way of white of the Church of Thurlin? where you're literally branded as undead or you just become undead i imagine it's more you just become undead because uh they don't seem particularly interested in making more <laughs> you know what i'm saying oh by the way i had to take a little break right here i apologize same reason why we have post commentary uh, my daughter has been a little bit sick she's had a cold and i've been trying to take care of her and then in the course of taking care of her i got sick myself so that's just how that goes but um yeah, she's doing fine, by the way. Uh, she's she's recovered at this point. Still a little bit lacking in energy, but any any case, she's 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 getting better. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. The the dark sign shit is just. It's the most important like remaining point in the lore to me. That and the first flame are like. The First Flame, the Dark Sign, the Lord Vessel. These are things I want to know more about in uh, in Dark Souls 3. The Lord Vessel kind of makes sense. It, it, you, you need something to contain these powerful souls. I mean, that makes sense. But who made it? And what, it, what was it made from? Why is it able to actually contain these souls? Why do these souls need to be contained? If you can just find uh, souls like just laying around, like... I don't know if that there necessarily will be answers, but here you see how completely not dangerous these things are. I fucked that up every single possible way I could have fucked it up, and it did not matter at all. <laughs> I don't know, man. <sighs> uh, so, today we're going to have a legit bed of chaos fight. Uh, I haven't done it this way since I think I first learned about using arrows in the quit load. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, this boss didn't turn out at all like FromSoft wanted. Uh, the Bed of Chaos was originally going to be completely different with the bed actually flailing around while another character served as the actual boss. And I recommend reading the Design Works interview to learn more about it. Uh, but they ran out of time in the development, basically, and the fight kind of became a puzzle boss. So you have to run around and hit two weak, weak spots on the sides to make the core vulnerable. Uh, and then the floor starts to fall out around you and the bed of chaos pushes you around with its arms And it's a really 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 fucking annoying boss and they knew it uh, But as a result they give you these little mini checkpoints uh, the side parts don't respawn And as a result, it's easy to to hit one quit and reload the game to appear outside the boss room and then It's, it's easy to avoid pitfalls using that kind of gimmick uh, You can combine that with a bow to attack from ranged and uh, you don't have to deal with the pitfalls at all. This is a really cool little, the the way the area is designed right there so that you can just be able to run around the little guy. Um, yeah, it that that's not the intended way to do the fight. Like, I think bows or whatever are fine, but like the quit load thing isn't intended. Personally, I don't give a shit. It's an annoying fight. It's not really well designed. They know it's not really well designed, so. I don't really have any any issues with using quit load. I've done it many many times, uh, but today specifically we're not going to use that method. Uh, I want to just show the fight as it comes, and we're not gonna we're not gonna rush it. We're not gonna worry about deaths or whatever. We're just gonna. I just want to show the fight as it's supposed to be, uh, as it's in the game. But we just picked up the chaos fire whip. Fire whips taught by Quelana of Isolith. Chaos fire, fire Whip, Art of the Flame of Chaos, which engulfed the Witch of Isleth and her daughters, sweep foes with Chaos Fire Whip. The Fire Whip was wielded by the eldest of the Daughters of Chaos. Um, if you take that to mean that the, the Chaos Fire Whip specifically is the one that was wielded by the eldest, 
Uh, it, it really kind of heavily implies that the witch that we killed outside this uh, fog gate was the eldest of the daughters. Uh, interestingly, she, like Quailana, has not been transformed by the flame. Uh, Quailana says outright, only I escaped, but the one we killed is still very unlikely to actually be Quailana, as we killed a physical being, not a phantom. It wasn't an inv invader. Like, Kirk being here actually draws a perfect contrast. So, uh, is Quailana truly unaware that the Eldest survived? Or is that the reason that she can't face the bed of chaos? Is the Eldest still committed to her mother's plan? That's the power of Dark Souls right there. One enemy, one item, boom. It gives you all these kind of different implications that you just can't shake. And the answers are specifically not there. There's answerless questions so that you can dream of this fucking annoying boss. The bed of chaos. So here she is, the big mama herself. Uh, what became of the Witch of Isolith. The bed of chaos. See the light shining down from the top of the dome here. Normally I don't really stop to look around by the time that I get into this boss room. I'm normally in a hurry to get done with this, but... It actually is a pretty cool setting. Like, overall, I think... It's one of the things Miyazaki-san said in the design works is that the artists did a great job, but just the gameplay and the, the uh, art, they, they couldn't manage to make things work. Uh, I can zoom in here with the bow so you can get a good look at how the, the roots kind of look like hair. Uh, you would normally want to shoot these targets. You, I don't think you can do it from here. You actually got to get a lot closer. Uh, but shooting these with a bow and then quitting and loading, and that would kind of get you by. Uh, one thing that a lot of people point out is that the Isolith Catalyst actually looks kind of similar to these large glowing roots that are pinned down onto these points on the side. Uh, a lot of people kind of suspect that maybe this is two of the Daughters of Chaos have become these, these side points that you actually have to destroy. I don't know. Like it, it, it's 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 an interesting idea, but you notice the roots look like hair hanging down, and then she's got these hands. So this is basically what became of the Witch of Isolith. Extremely, like I said, extremely annoying fight because of the way that these hands push you around. Even if you block them, even if you roll dodge, you you still get pushed around and moved by these hands. And it's not a big deal right now, but once the pitfalls start opening up, it becomes a huge major hassle. But we're just going to deal with it today. And that right there is the main thing you want to see, where she swipes once and then there's a slam down. And then there will be a slight pause before her next attack. And most of the fight is just about baiting that one move right there so that you can actually make progress. See, I should have just sprinted at that point, but sitting here trying to explain it and then once you get to a certain point she starts having trouble hitting you she can hit you with that but the slam down is obviously in the wrong location so once you get close you see this chaos fire energy that's surrounding these roots on this first one you can just kind of take your time there's not really there's nothing she can do to you yet and then you just want to hit this glowing root. And that'll trigger the cutscene. Like I said, a lot of people think these are daughters of Isolith over here. I'm not I'm not really sure. I don't know. An interesting point is that it seems like the thing that we actually destroyed was pinning down the bed of chaos. It almost seems as if it was restricting it. Perhaps the uh, the daughters realized that the ritual went out of control and they were doing their best to control the result. Huh. Things get really nasty now. The little fire stabs 
fire stab tentacle thing is a pain in the ass to dodge. And you got the hands to deal with, and then there's these pits. So the main thing with the pits is when you block, block in such a direction that you're not going to get pushed into a pit, which is fucking hard, as you just saw. It's, it's not one of those things you can necessarily predict where you're going to get pushed to. Because it depends on the timing and the angle as much as the direction you're facing. The only thing you can really do is make sure you're facing in the right direction. And then, if you were going to do it the easy way, you would normally sneak around the side like I'm doing right now. Because the fire tentacle has difficulty hitting you over here. And you can sneak over this way. And then you can whip out a bow. And you can snipe this other weak point over here. But, um, yeah. We're, we're not gonna do it this way. I'm just I'm just showing you in case you're you've been following this as a guide uh, Somehow or another Yeah, this this would be the point you would want to snipe it from oh, I just need to Let the fire tentacle do its thing and then I can work my way back around can see a really rare attack here in just a second. One that I don't really see very often. That one right there, the fireballs rain down all over the place. She's got a bunch of butthole attacks to be honest. Now here, I'm going to show you what not to do. I didn't intend, I thought I could make it, which that's always the case. You need to bait that slam down attack, and then you can make a break for it. If you go, you can make it through the double swipes, but you have to, you can't hesitate at all. And like, I paused, and plus we're mid-rolling today, I don't know if y'all noticed. I normally, I normally don't mid-roll, but I guess it really doesn't matter here. But, um, yeah, <laughs> she clipped me with the first hand and that was enough to push me back a little bit and then she got me with the second one was enough to push me back all the way. I was expecting to only be hit by one hand, which wouldn't have pushed me back far enough to kill me, but I got hit by two. Uh, as for dodging that flame tentacle, that was luck. <laughs> I can't lie. You can see it actually strikes from behind you, but you can block it all the same. It's really weird. Some strange hitboxes. Now here, I'm just trying to stand close enough to bait her to do her hand slam. Uh, and she makes it difficult by using the fire tentacle while you're in this range. So it's a really, this is, this is why I say it's a really poorly designed fight. Here, I finally got the hand slam. And now I can just go. Uh, because there's not much you can do but stand in range to try to bait the attack that's going to let you actually make progress in the fight and then she can just kind of hit you with impunity with the uh the fire attack it doesn't do much damage that's kind of the one saving grace but like i said they realized the design for this was kind of fucked The other jar, large root has been busted. Kind of looks like an Isleth Catalyst. Now she can start using this Firestorm. So there's a Firestorm. There's the Fire Tentacle hitting down at us from a point that we can't see with our camera right here. There's, uh, she's sweeping her root hands at us. There's pitfalls everywhere that are the most dangerous thing. Like, Tilting your camera up to see where her attacks are coming from is going to result in your death because you're going to end up in a pitfall. <laughs> That's normally, like, it's really, really, really bad. The Firestorm, when you're in a big open area like this, it's not that difficult to deal with. It's pretty easy to dodge. The problem is <laughs> she can cast it when you're in a very narrow tunnel with nowhere to dodge. 
You actually have to approach close enough to get that to, to break. And that's what's going to allow you to finish the fight. But once again, it's all about baiting that big hand slam down. Here it comes. But I got pushed back by the fire, so I wasn't sure if I was going to have enough time to make the dash. So, all right, we'll just be safe. We'll wait and we'll try to bait it again. And here it is slam and then you just kind of run right off here i used to roll i used to jump you can just walk <laughs> that part's a little bit easier than you would expect once you get in here you have to hurry uh i'm not i'm just gonna hit them normally you want to roll through these so that you can keep moving so this doesn't happen because you can get firestormed right in here there's obviously nothing you can fucking do but not be in this situation so you have to roll through quickly and that's why i recommend light roll for this i guess but um, having said that, even at base vitality, we don't have our ring of favor, or we're not at base vitality, we're at like 16 or something, it's still not very high. At a low vitality rating, with no ring of favor, we can still survive firestorms, so we're just gonna sit here and look at the, this bug, this is the bed of chaos right here, this little sickly looking bug. This is the source of all this fucking hell. Looks like it's infected the witch of the witch of Isolith. One hit's all it takes. That's it. It's dead and we got the Lord Soul. Uh it's it's not particularly difficult to clear if you know what you're doing. Uh it's just not fun. Soul of the Bed of Chaos, Mother of Demons. Soul of the Better Chaos and the Mother of All Demons. This Lord Soul was found at the dawn of the Age of Fire. The Witch of Isleth attempted to duplicate the first flame from a soul, but instead created a distorted being of chaos and fire. Its power formed a bed of life, which would become the source of all demons, and is more than enough to satiate the Lord Vessel. Uh, fascinating points. She attempted to du duplicate the first flame from a soul. It's unclear if she did this because the first flame was dying out. And she was going to relight it. Like, you, you can never light the same fire twice, right? Like, if you wanted to relight a fire, you're making a copy of the fire. You're making an, another fire. And in fact, if you think of the souls as embers from the fire, the Lord souls as being embers from the first flame, then she's literally taking a piece of that flame and attempting to relight the flame. She's attempting to duplicate it. Uh, but it's unclear if she did that because the flame was dying out or just because she wanted to have one of her own that she wanted to, to control. Another fascinating thing, she became the mother of all demons. Uh, it's really interesting that Fire Sage Demon was supposed to be the first demon. Actually, in an interview, I think it was in the Design Works interview, I think that Miyazaki-san actually talked about Ceaseless Discharge as being the first demon. Uh, I'm not sure. I have to go back and check. Maybe you guys, I, I highly recommend, once again, checking out the Design Works. But that was kind of an interesting little conflict, if, if, if I'm remembering things correctly. Uh, but in either case, and if I recall correctly, Ceaseless was also supposed to be the youngest of her children, so. But yeah, she became the mother of all demons. Uh, and I'll remind you too, the sexual guardi guardian is something akin to what is called a demon, but was not actually a demon. That was really a kind of fascinating point. But now we're going to go back to Koilana and see what she has to say since we have defeated her mother, defeated the bed of chaos as she requested. What's up, girl? Outstanding. You have done very well. Thank you. I am blessed to have met you. I suppose I can call you fool no longer. I can hardly thank you enough. Please take this. It is all of me. Fire Tempest. Thank you. I am blessed to have met you. I suppose I can call you fool no longer. Alright, at this point we've done what she requested. We freed her mother and sisters, or at least as she sees it, we freed them. Um, and she's given us all of her, her very essence. Ah. 
Very well. There is nothing left for me to teach you. Our time together is done. It was short, but sweet. Fool, hurry along. I can do nothing more for you. Fool, hurry along. I can do nothing more for you. And that's the last you're going to see of Koilana. Uh, we exit the area, and when, you go, when we go back, she'll be gone. Uh, yeah, really cool character. Miyazaki-san said he wanted to make her just kind of a, a good character. He wanted a good character in the game. And that's kind of... Uh, Art of the Flame of Chaos, which engulfed the Witch of Isleth and her daughters. The Witch of Isleth, in an ambitious attempt to copy the first flame, created instead the blah blah blah. The Fire Tempest is the primal py pyromancy of Quailana. The tempestuous, raging flames resemble those summoned by the Daughters of Chaos when they challenged the ancient dragons and scorched the very earth. We now have the Fire Tempest. It's all of her. <laughs> Quailana's signature move, I suppose. And you see here, when we come back into the swamp... She's gone. That's it. That is the end of Quailana's storyline right there. So, all there is left for us to do, guys, is to say... I am Marcus, also known as EMB. This has been From the Dark. We have got two bosses left. We are right at the end of the playthrough. Let's go and do the thing. <laughs> Surprise, bitches. Those roots, man. Oh, God. All right, all right, all right. Let's really do the thing this time. <laughs>